Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing some more spring and Easter DIYs. This first project, we're starting out using some of these wood eggs that I got from Amazon. You can use plastic eggs if you want for this project. It really doesn't matter. But all I'm going to do is start painting some of these with some pastel colors. I mixed up this really pretty pinkish kind of purple color and then I'm also using some moss green and a couple of these I'm going to use some antiquing wax and just brush it on and then wipe it off with a paper towel. Then I also ended up using a color called warm buff and this is actually in a satin finish. I kind of liked that some of these were going to be matte and some of these were going to have a little bit of a shine to them. And I'm really sorry if you can hear in the background of this voiceover it is absolutely pouring rain and it is really loud so I'm sorry about that but back to this project I wanted to use some of my Dollar Tree rub-on transfers to kind of decorate these eggs and before I start doing this I also wanted to mention the main reason I wanted to use those wood eggs is because I only did one coat of paint on these and you can kind of still see the wood grain I also forgot to mention that I did leave some of the wood eggs just the raw wood so now I'm just decorating these eggs with rub-on transfers and these are actually my favorite Dollar Tree rub-on transfers the ones on the parchment paper they are a little bit difficult to work with and do move around and they don't really stick like the other ones do but they turn out really beautiful and they're so easy to just use your nail and rub them onto whatever you're using. So once I had all my eggs finished, then this is the milk glass tray bowl that I'm going to be using. It's a large one and it's really pretty and I just love it. So I picked up this kind of springish ribbon from Dollar Tree. I'm actually going to thread this through my milk glass piece and then once I get to the beginning again, I will just tie a bow. This is another super easy project. I found this old oil lamp at the thrift store and of course it's old and not really useful for its original purpose and it was also missing the glass top so I wanted to upcycle this and reuse it and repurpose it for something different. So I found these dried florals on Amazon and you get a ton in this little pack. It also comes with little tweezers to help you place these pieces. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just picking out a bunch of flowers and greenery pieces that I liked and mixing them up, placing them inside of this old oil lamp. I was also thinking while I was doing this how easily it could be changed. After spring and summer, you could remove the flowers, put little pumpkins in it for fall or even fall leaves. So again, just a very diverse piece. Also, I want to mention before I started this project, I did wash and clean this oil lamp very good. So here is how it looked once I had my flowers inside of there. Then I just replaced that little top piece and right there where the wick for the oil lamp used to be I'm actually going to use that as a vase and I'm taking some more of these florals just mixing them up picking ones I like and I'm going to put them down inside of that little hole where the wick used to be so this was just a fun little way to upcycle an old oil lamp for a spring project Thank you. 
I found this really beautiful chunky wood frame at the thrift store and I knew immediately the project I wanted to do specifically for this frame. So I'm starting out by just cutting down a piece of Dollar Tree foam board to fit the frame and I have been absolutely loving sketches artist sketches any kind of sketches really I'm just really obsessed with those right now especially sketches that are done on canvas so I'm using a piece of drop cloth that I cut down to fit over my poster board and I'm using some Mod Podge and doing small sections at a time and smoothing this drop cloth over my poster board now I also left a little bit of excess canvas on the edges of the poster poster board so I could flip this over and just cut those corners and then I'm able to fold up the excess again I'm just using some Mod Podge and I'm putting it on the foam board and also on the drop cloth then I'm folding it up and adding one more little layer of Mod Podge over top of it. I wanted to do a sketch of a bunny for this project, so I found this cute little bunny on Google, and I actually traced him out onto some packing paper that I had since this was a larger project, and it worked out perfectly, so I just traced that out from my computer. And then to transfer this onto the drop cloth, I'm using some of my carbon paper paper from Amazon and I'm using two sheets for this since it is larger. I just taped both those sheets down and then taped the bunny on top of my carbon paper and then I'm using the little tool that came with the carbon paper. Now for this canvas drop cloth I did have to use a bit more pressure and as you can see it's very lightly transferred onto here. So all I'm going to do is just use a pencil and go over all of my lines a couple times to make them nice and dark. Once I had traced over it again, then I'm just going to start going back in and adding some little details. I added some darker fur to his chest and then added some little paws for him. I also added in back his tail, which I didn't do from the transfer paper. Now at this point, you could totally be done with this project, but of course I had to add just a little more extra stuff. So I'm very, very lightly kind of making shadows and highlights around him. And then I'm also going back in and just barely brushing my pencil over this to kind of shade in the entire bunny. For this project, I wanted to make a little bunny candle holder, so I'm going to be using a candle cup from Hobby Lobby and this little round wood plaque piece from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using some air dry clay to actually make the bunny piece. I warmed some clay up in my hands and then I'm just going to start shaping a basic bunny body and head out of this. And it's really simple to do this, just roll the air dry clay clay on a mat or something and make the bottom portion of this bunny a little bit bigger than his head and then you can start making a neck part and then shaping the head a little bit but make sure you leave a tiny little piece at the top because here I am cutting in between that piece of clay to make the ears then I'm just going to keep shaping the ears until I'm happy with them I decided to fold one of my bunny ears over over to the front. If you wanted to, you could leave them straight up or point them backwards or however you want to do this. When I was happy with the basic shape of my bunny, then I'm going to take another little piece of air dry 
dry clay and I'm going to make an arm for this bunny. My plan is to have the bunny holding the candlestick. So I'm going to end up making two little outstretched arms with some more air dry clay. And to kind of see where I need to put his arm, I'm using the actual candle that I'll be using in this candle holder. Then for now to attach his arm just for the time being until I get the other arm on, all I had to do was just use my finger and lightly smooth out the clay into the bunny body. Then I'm going to work on the second arm and for this arm I wanted him to be reaching a little bit higher on the candle so that you would be able to see it from the front side. And again to attach it for now I am just smoothing that clay together. Then I'm going to go back in and just work on his body a little bit more. I wanted to kind of push in his stomach area so it gave the appearance that the bottom part were his feet. And then once I had that finished, then I will go back in, use a little bit of water on my finger. I'm going to smooth out any rough spots or cracks. And I'm also going to go over his arms to make sure that they are nice and secure on his body. I also wanted to add a little tail to the back side of him, so I'm just taking a tiny little piece of air dry clay, rolling that into a ball, and then using the water to attach it to his back side. I also wanted to give his tail a little bit of texture, so I'm just taking this little poker tool that's from Dollar Tree, and since the air dry clay is a little bit wet, I am just taking that and kind of fluffing it, poking and pulling on the tail a little bit. To finish him off, I'm using some Dollar Tree floor wire and I decided to make some little whiskers for him. So I just cut a couple pieces down and I'm going to poke it into the clay before it's dry. Then I'm going to set him aside and let him dry overnight. Now I had an idea for this candle so it wouldn't be so plain and just a simple white taper candle. Now this Disclaimer, this is going to be totally just for decoration. I don't plan on burning this candle. Again, just for decoration. But I thought this would be really pretty to paint for spring and add some spring flowers to this candle. I'm using some acrylic paints. I just mixed up a pink color that I liked. I'm also using some antique gold and some brown and moss green. There's really no rhyme or reason to the way I painted this. I just kind of started out with the pink color, made some little flowers on here just by making tiny little lines to make the petals. Then I used the antique gold and went behind those flowers to make different little flowers. And I used the moss green color to make the stems and the little leaves for the, all the flowers. Then I went back in with a tiny little paintbrush and used my brown color to do the center little pieces of those pink flowers. And to finish the candle off, I'm just going back in with some of that antique gold and a small little paintbrush and filling in all the little empty spots just by making tiny little gold dots everywhere. The next day, once the bunny was completely dry, then I used some gel super glue to attach the candle holder and then used gel super glue to attach the bunny as well. Now I wanted my candle holder to be bronze or brass looking so I'm going in to start with and doing one coat of my apple barrel acrylic paint in the color burnt umber. It's just a deep dark brown color almost black but not quite you can use black if you wanted to but I'm going to be using some rub and buff on this and the color you put underneath your rub and buff will kind of show through a little bit so I wanted to make this more of a brassy color you can see here as I started doing the rub and buff you can kind of see that brown undertone on here and that's exactly what I wanted so I'm just using a little brush and and some of my European gold rub and buff and I'm gonna go over this entire candle holder and that's gonna be it for today's video I hope you all enjoyed it thank you so much for watching I'll see you next time